Okay, what's up guys? So in this video, we are going to go through a jumpstart nutrition guide in which I will show you five levels that you can use to get to a close to perfect diet. Some benefits that you can expect from implementing this are removing brain fog, having more energy, fixing gut issues, improving decision making because you have better mental clarity and building a better body. If you don't know who I am, my name is Jasper Munk and I run Herculean Biology where we help clients optimize their focus and energy and build a high performing jacked body. You can access the health thesis here and you can also join the community here. Feel free to watch this video at 2x speed to save yourself some time. And lastly, this is not medical advice. Be sure to talk to a physician or a professional before implementing anything discussed. So first up, some housekeeping. I wanted to make this guide because nearly everyone is making mistakes in their nutrition even though it is arguably the biggest lever that you can pull for both health, performance, and well-being. People are more hostile about their diets being superior to anything out there than pretty much any other topic except maybe politics, so please try to stay neutral. I have tried to do the same, but also feel free to leave a comment for a thoughtful discussion. This is for entrepreneurs and generally high-achieving people who want to get the most out of their day, achieve their goals faster, and live a better life while doing so. If you deal with any of the following issues, such as brain fog, chronic fatigue, a scattered focus, feeling behind, being tired all day, having a massive midday crash, not having the body that you want and getting easily distracted, then this will definitely help you. This will also help you if you're already decently on point with these areas, but you're looking to really dial it in. If you're currently relying on ordering takeouts to get your daily nutrition in, and if you generally think it takes too much time and energy to have a great body and great health. In this video, I will show you a protocol that will allow you to get the benefits you're looking for while being able to stay focused on your primary mission. We don't want to spend the entire day doing trivial stuff. Generally speaking, if you want the natural vibration and respect that comes with a healthy aesthetic body and sharp mind, if you want to achieve your goals faster without having to constantly push yourself or wear yourself down, and if you want to have more vitality, higher libido, more energy and more mental clarity then adopting these principles will help you. Let's talk about state of the art nutrition. So I've gone through the numbers before, but there are many reasons to be concerned. Testosterone is dropping 1% year by year. IQ is decreasing. Autoimmune diseases and allergies are skyrocketing. Fertility is going down drastically. People, their attention span and focus are destroyed and cancer cases are going through the roof. Just to name a few examples. There are a few reasons why this is happening and we're going to go deeper into these in the future, but many of us are stuck in a dangerous loop. If we are already unhealthy, we are often trying to solve our health issues from the outside in. Holistically, this often means getting caught in the hype of supplements, new diets and quick fixes. And allopathically or through Western medicine, this means using drugs to have a workaround to address a higher level symptom rather than solving a root problem. And if this drug has side effects, well, congrats, you're now stuck in the pharma system, building up a laundry list of drugs to solve problems that are caused by other drugs in the first place. And I can tell you that I have seen this happen countless of times with people very close to me. Functional medicine is a new movement that is helping and that is fixing root problems rather than addressing high level symptoms. So there is some progression in this, but you can always remember that the body heals itself. And Francois Voltaire said it best, the art of medicine consists in amusing the patient while nature cursed the disease. Now, even if we are healthy, we often end up tampering with things that are okay as is. And this just causes massive inconsistency if you eat something different every day, you have no clue what your body responds well to. And if the five levels we are about to speak about aren't on point, then it's going to be very hard for you to get up to that 90 to 100% capacity, especially if you do it all by yourself. So there are two things to optimize for. For any entrepreneur or high achiever who wants to get to that 90 plus percent optimized level, you have to realize that you have a unique NS1 biology. Your biology is literally unique on this planet. This is why different things will work for you than for someone else. This means you have to cut out all fat diets, you have to take little supplements, most of it is just nonsense. So firstly, we want to be data driven from an N is one perspective. We want to use your own data to make informed decisions rather than large scale data. Properly set up studies are still great reference points, but many studies are observational and are funded with the wrong incentives. This is what gets us false beliefs such as sugar is okay, fat is evil, and red meat is bad. Secondly, we want to approach health from a holistic standpoint. So for the body to heal itself, we need to stop treating it as an A plus B is C system. 
Our biology is on one hand incredibly complex, but it is also very simple as hundreds of millions of years of evolution have shaped us to get to this point. And you have to realize that at the end of the day, we are just over glorified monkeys. We are developing more and more complex medical solutions without looking at a way of living that aligns with our biology. Our entire evolution has been spent eating food in its pure, natural and whole state. The vast majority of this time being unheated and pretty much the entire time being unprocessed and unsprayed with chemicals, except for the last two centuries. We can't seem to adapt this fast. So without further ado, here are the five levels of nutritional optimization. First up, there is choosing better food. Then there's quantity and ratios of the food. There's food sourcing, food preparation, and lastly, timing and combining. So level one is choosing better foods. And this obviously starts with food selection. We want to choose foods that have high nutrient density. And we'll go into more detail as we continue with the different levels. But you want to have foods that have high vitamins, high minerals, high fat, and high protein, and that have a balanced profile of these nutrients. It's also to be aware of the bioavailability and the digestibility of the foods. And a great example of this is beans. On paper, they are a healthy and complete source of protein, but problems start to arise when we delve deeper. First up, they have a protein digestibility corrected amino acid score of 0.6 or around that, depending on what type of bean you choose. It sounds like a lot of big words, but it is actually quite simple. Amino acids are the building blocks of protein. And what this score entails is that the protein in beans has a different amino acid profile and has a low protein bioavailability compared to different sources like milk and eggs that have a score of one. What this means is that to get sufficient protein from beans, you would have to eat nearly twice as many. Next, it's important to be aware that the bioavailability of minerals and vitamins in their animal-based forms will pretty much always be superior to that of the plant-based counterparts. In iron, there is heme iron versus non-heme iron. In omega-3, there's EPA and DHA versus ALA. In vitamin A, there is retinol versus beta-carotene. And in protein, it often means complete animal-based profiles versus incomplete plant-based profiles. Lastly, it's also important to talk about anti-nutrients in vegetables. So... First up, vegetables are still significantly healthier than any standard non-whole food diet nowadays, but I generally lean toward a diet that is high in animal fat and protein with fruits, which have low anti-nutrients. It requires more data, both NS1, but also non-observational long-term analysis, because, well, if you look at observational studies, people will say that this type of diet is toxic, which totally does not seem to be the case. The fact of the matter is that to replace animal-based foods, you need to create a 20-ingredient meat replacer, you need to fortify B12, and so on, unless you eat huge amounts of beans and tofu, which have their own issues, and that is just not natural. The best thing I've learned regarding health is to stop trying to get away from nature, as humans, we think we are smarter than nature and we simply aren't. And as we move away from nature more and more, we seem to get sicker and sicker. I wrote down a few different forms of anti-nutrients. So first up, there's phytates, which block the uptake of minerals such as calcium, magnesium, zinc, and iron. There's oxalates, which block mineral uptake as well as forming kidney stones. And there's also tannins, which block non-heme iron uptake and can also cause gastrointestinal issues. Next for level one, we need to talk about some common problems. So first up, there is going out to eat or getting takeout. Pretty much all the food that you will get in this way and also in regular grocery store will be pasteurized. And I personally don't agree with the process of pasteurization unless you are a very unhealthy individual. When pasteurization happens, there are a few different problems that occur, uh, but we'll keep it to the three main ones. So first, the pasteurization creates a significant loss of nutrients. Specifically, protein gets denatured, which depending on the protein can be quite bad. Vitamins get damaged, or at least the vitamins that are heat sensitive. And the bioavailability of minerals also changes to some extent, although they are more resistant than vitamins and protein. Secondly, pasteurization destroys enzymes. And a great example of this is with dairy. When people consume unpasteurized dairy, even though they might have lactose intolerance, when they start to actually drink unpasteurized milk or uh, take any unpasteurized form of dairy, they won't have any issues. The reason for this is that pasteurization destroys the enzyme called lactase, which breaks down lactose. Last problem is that pasteurization destroys all bacteria. And if you are a very unhealthy individual, I would obviously recommend you to drink pasteurized things. But if you are a healthy individual and your gut health is on point or you're working on improving your gut health, then having unpasteurized foods allows you to get more exposure to different types of bacteria, which then can contribute to your gut health. 
Next, a big problem is that a lot of restaurants will still use seed oils, which you can ask any reference point, any type of literature are definitely bad. There's also a lot of additives that they might have in store-bought sauces, and there's also a lot of thickening agents and preservatives that they might use. The second big problem is that a lot of people prioritize taste and palatability over nutrition. Evolutionarily, we are wired to seek out calorie-dense foods that are sweet, salty, and fatty because these are energy-rich and thus valuable foods in an ancestral environment. Modern processed foods are designed to be hyperpalatable and thus addictive, overstimulating our taste buds and driving consumption. As a result, it becomes easier to prioritize taste over nutrition, causing overeating through two different mechanisms. The first being the dopamine hit that we get from the palatability, and the second one being the lack of actual nutrients in the food. The last problem is that there's a lot of misleading labels out there. So the food industry often uses words like natural, healthy, light, whole grain, or sugar-free on packaging to encourage health-conscious consumers. But these terms can often be very misleading. For example, a product labeled natural might still contain preservatives and sugar-free might be loaded with artificial sweeteners that are far more damaging than sugar itself. So second level is improving the quantity and the ratios. And there are three different problems that I see time and time again. First up is the overconsumption of carbohydrates. And this comes from two different things. First up is the taste. Carbohydrates generally taste very nice. They give a very big dopamine hit because it's a very energy rich food. And another problem is malnourishment. Deficiencies, for example, in fat can cause us to crave carbohydrates, which might sound off, but that's how it does works. So second is the underconsumption of fats. Fat is the most powerful and stable source of energy for our body, which has huge mental benefits. And it lubricates, protects our system, and makes solvents, allowing us to rid ourselves of toxins and heal long-standing health problems. Do note that the digestibility of fats has to be built up. You can't go from super carb heavy to super fat heavy overnight. So the third problem is not enough protein. So for foods, you want to stick to the most nutrient-dense, high-protein foods, such as eggs, beef, oysters, salmon, venison, lamb, uh, bison, these types of foods. I generally would not recommend you to go plant-only. If you're a serious athlete or even looking to build more muscle, I don't see how you're going to eat enough protein on a plant-only diet and also be healthy in the process. I was partly plant-based, six months strict vegetarian, and I also was completely vegan for a while, and it is just not a sustainable way to do things. If you insist on going plant-only, then there are two primary sources of protein, being legumes and soy. The problem with legumes is that they have a lot of anti-nutrients called lectins, such as PHA. They're completely toxic if eaten raw, which is generally not a good sign. And they're shown to cause gut dysbiosis and inflammation while also being linked to Parkinson's disease. With soy, the phytic acid in soy chelates minerals in our gut, preventing absorption, and it's far less bioavailable than meat. Okay, so level three is food sourcing and ensuring high quality. First up, we have to get toxin exposure in check. So this means we have to get in check our heavy metal exposure, pesticide residue on vegetables and fruits, and also mycotoxins, which can uh, contaminate our vegetables and fruits and can then contaminate the feed of the animals. So they can also be in animal food. To fully go in depth into these toxins and the way that they impact our bodies goes way beyond the scope of this video. But be aware that these toxins can be carcinogenic. They can suppress our immune system. They can cause organ damage as well as a hundred of different problems throughout our body not a lot more. So it's important to have your sourcing in check, which takes us to the next point. In terms of sourcing, you'll want to buy foods at an organic farm, especially if you are animal-based. You want to avoid plants sprayed with herbicides and pesticides, organic is always preferred. And if you can't do that, then be sure to wash and soak with baking soda or unpasteurized apple cider vinegar. In terms of storage, uh, this might be difficult to find for meat. I am personally not able to do this right now, but you want to avoid freezing food as this damages nutrients, enzymes, and bacteria. Cooling food can also do the same, so you don't want to keep eggs in the fridge, for example. And you also do not want to store your food in plastic, so you can avoid microplastics leaching in your food. Glass is always the best option. So level four is preparation, and we first need to talk about pans. So the problem with pans is that most pans that we use are Teflon and nonstick pans, which are coated with PTFE and PFAS, which when heated release this acid, which I can't pronounce, but the abbreviation is PFOA. And this is actually a substance that is not allowed to be used in pans nowadays, but they just changed it with PTFE and PFAS, which still release PFOA. This acid is super carcinogenic, suppresses the immune system and impacts fertility. So 
there are some alternatives that are a lot better. The best alternatives are steel or glass pans. Ceramic can be okay if they are PFAS, PTFE, and PFOA free, but they can still release a lead, which can cause mental health disorders. Next up is cleaning agents. So the residue of the products that we use to clean our surroundings and cooking material, including utensils, they are constantly entering our bodies. So it's best to clean with a natural cleaning product. Cold press uses in the store, they're important to check that they don't use high pressure processing. So the abbreviation is HPP. These damage the bacteria in these uses. You also want to ensure freshness, like 100% pure juice that is recently pressed and so on. Lastly, a controversial one is cooking. Cooking forms advanced glycation end products or AGEs. These cause aging, diabetes, cardiovascular disease, inflammation, and different neurological disorders. High temperature cooking, such as grilling, frying, and roasting, generally create more AGEs than lower temperature cooking, such as simmering and boiling. And an important or fun note with this, which is super observational, so this might be completely uh, off by me, but in the blue zones where people are prized for you know, having high longevity, they generally do not use that many high temperature methods of cooking. They generally do simmering and boiling and these types of cooking methods. Personally, I'm on a largely raw animal based and fruit diet right now, but I haven't been on it long enough to make any definite claims on its benefits. So I'll keep you posted on that. Okay, so last level, level five is food timing and combining. You can manipulate your energy levels with good food timing. Throughout the day, you want to generally stick to stimulating foods such as red meat, which can keep you going without creating a lot of brain fog or creating any type of fatigue or low levels of energy. Then at the end of the day, especially after you've already trained, after you've done your work, then it's a good time to start introducing carbohydrates because they can, they can well, firstly help you replenish your carbohydrate stores, but they can also help you with actually becoming more fatigued and falling asleep easier. In terms of combinations, eating foods together can either increase or decrease the absorption of nutrients and below are a few clear not to do's. So firstly, as we already discussed, combining anti-nutrients with other nutrient dense foods, not a good idea. Combining vegetables and fruits with meats and seafood is also not a good idea. And here's why. When we eat vegetables and fruits, we create an alkaline environment in our digestive tract, which makes our stomach acids, for example, less acidic and less capable of breaking down meats and seafood because it is less acidic. The same goes with drinking fluids. So you generally do not want to drink too much between at least half an hour to an hour uh, before you start eating and also during eating so that you're able to properly break down the food that is in your stomach. So I hope this helps and you've got some new tools that you can start to implement to take your diet to the next level. If you want to fully outsource your health from A to Z, get everything taken care of, optimize your energy levels, your focus levels and your levels of clarity, also build a high performing and jacked body, then be sure to book a call with us. If you want to get access to resources to further optimize your health, then be sure to check out the health thesis in the description. And outside of that, I wish you a good day. Bye-bye.